Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. This video is an update on the massive surge of climate propaganda and fraud which we're being bombarded with right now. Forty years ago, the CIA director William Casey said, We will know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. As I'm going to show you, they're getting pretty close to achieving that goal. Apple TV is currently showing a David Attenborough film which is promoting lockdowns as good for the planet. The film purports to show how you couldn't see the Himalayas from Kathmandu prior to lockdown, but since the lockdowns occurred, now you can see the Himalayas bright and clear from Kathmandu. So I captured two frames of the movie to show you what they did. They used the same photograph, but in the purported pre-lockdown version, they photoshopped out the Himalayas. This is pretty blatant fraud by David Attenborough and his film crew. And the pollutants in Kathmandu are not greenhouse gases because the greenhouse gases are invisible. Globalists didn't like the fact that they used to have to wait in long lines at airport security. And they certainly don't like driving in traffic jams. So they're currently on a rampage to convince the little people that they need to stay locked up in their homes for their own good. A lot of their efforts to misinform the public have been based around the concept of global warming. They use primal fear to scare people with concepts like, if we don't stop climate change, you're going to drown or you're going to burn up. And they try to scare people with two different burning up scenarios. One is that you'll actually burn up in a forest fire, and the other is that global warming will cause a massive heat wave which will simply be too hot for your body to survive. The goal is to convince people that they need to be locked up in their homes or they're going to die. Let's start this story by going back in time to 1979. Starting from there, we can see how government and the press have rewritten and hidden history as part of their propaganda campaign. This article is from the Age newspaper in Melbourne, February 16, 1979. Preparing the world for a new ice age. Drought floods, the failure of monsoons, and the run of hard winters are all evidence, they say, that the world has come to the end of a spell of even-tempered weather, which began in about 1910 and lasted until about 1960. This period has even been called a little tropical age by one of the more quotable of climatologists, Professor Reed Bryson. What follows the little tropical age could be harder to live with. Whether more typical of the 19th century or even of the little ice age which lasted between 1430 and 1850. This article was acknowledging the fact that cold climatic periods are very difficult on humans and have a lot of extreme weather. Everything which climate alarmists are now trying to blame on global warming were actually being caused by global cooling. Droughts, floods, the failure of monsoons, and the run of hard winters were all evidence of global cooling. And they're saying that from 1910 to 1960, Earth was very warm, but then it got a lot cooler after 1960. But if we look at the current NASA global temperature graph, we can see that they've turned the tropical age into one of the coldest periods on record. In his book 1984, George Orwell said, War is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. And NASA has added one more line to that, warm is cold. In 1989, the longtime head of NOAA's National Climatic Data Center, Tom Carl, said this, Analysis of warming since 1881 shows most of the increase in global temperature happened before 1919, before the more recent sharp rise in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, said Tom Carl of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's National Climatic Data Center in Asheville, North Carolina. While global climate warmed overall since 1881, it actually cooled from 1921 to 1979. Tom Carl said most of the warming occurred between 1881 and 1919. But NASA now shows that Earth cooled sharply from 1881 to 1919. NASA has rewritten Earth's history. They have reversed the trend prior to 1919. Tom Carl also said that Earth cooled from 1921 to 1979. But NASA has also rewritten that period of time to turn the cooling trend into a strong warming trend. NASA now shows that Earth has been warming rapidly since the year 1910. But 60 years ago, the New York Times reported that there was a unanimous consensus that Earth was cooling. And in 1970, the Washington Post reported that climatologists believe we were headed towards a new ice age. In fact, in 1971, the Washington Post reported that according to NASA's top climate expert, Dr. Rasool, we were only 50 to 60 years away from a disastrous new ice age. 
In 1970, the New York Times reported, the United States and the Soviet Union are mounting large-scale investigations to determine why the Arctic climate is becoming more frigid, why parts of Arctic sea ice have recently become ominously thicker, and whether the extent of that ice cover contributes to the onset of ice ages. Scientists wanted to stop the new ice age by sprinkling coal dust on the Arctic, which would make the ice melt and thus reduce the amounts of global cooling. And during 1972, 42 top American and European investigators congregated at Brown University to discuss the cooling. They then wrote a letter to President Nixon saying, The present rate of the cooling seems fast enough to bring glacial temperatures in about a century, if continuing at the present pace. If we look at the NASA temperature graph again, we can see that NASA has not only erased the Little Tropical Age, but they've also erased the Ice Age scare of the 1970s. Climatologists at the time knew that this period was very warm and this period was very cold, but NASA shows the exact opposite. This is the purported global temperature graph from NASA. Now let's focus on U.S. temperatures only. The United States has by far the best long-term temperature record in the world. Let's take a look at the U.S. data to see if we can find the 1910 to 1960 Little Tropical Age. This is what the untampered U.S. temperature data from NOAA looks like. We can see that the United States was very warm from 1910 until about 1960, and then it got much colder. And it's the same story with the percent of hot days in the United States. From 1910 till 1960, days over 90 degrees Fahrenheit were much more common in the U.S. than they have been over the past 60 years. The little tropical age from 1910 to 1960 is very visible in the U.S. temperature record. In fact, it was so hot and dry during the 1930s that millions of people fled the Midwest and moved to California. These were millions of genuine climate refugees from U.S. history, not the fake ones which politicians talk about now. Thermometer data from NOAA shows that there's been a sharp decrease in afternoon temperatures in the United States over the past century. But if we look at current temperature graphs from NASA or NOAA, they show the exact opposite. According to their published graphs, the United States is getting much warmer, and there was no little tropic age from 1910 to 1960. The official government graphs bear no resemblance to reality, as I'm about to show you. This graph shows the actual U.S. temperature data in the NOAA database, but this is the representation of the data which they release to the public. The published graphs show a strong warming trend, whereas the actual data shows a strong cooling trend. And in fact, two years ago in 2019, afternoon temperatures in the United States were the coolest of the last century. This is the actual data, but this is what NASA and NOAA showed to the public. They alter the data in a massive hockey stick. They cool past temperatures by about 1.5 degrees, and they inflate recent temperatures by more than 1 degree. In other words, government agencies are altering the U.S. temperature trend by about 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit. What they're doing is straight-up fraud. They are deceiving the public to make them believe that an actual measured cooling trend is a strong warming trend. They haven't covered their tracks very well, though, because the National Climate Assessment shows that heat waves were much worse in the United States from 1910 to 1960 than they have been since. The National Climate Assessment shows very clearly the 1910 to 1960 Little Tropical Age. The data shows very clearly that the 1910 to 1960 warm period was real, but it's very inconvenient for climate alarmists. Now let's take this a step further. This is the U.S. forest fire burn acreage graph from the United States Forest Service of the Department of Agriculture. It shows very clearly that burn acreage in the United States was much higher from about 1910 to 1960 than it has been over the past 60 years. Now let's overlay the National Climate Assessment heat wave graph on top of the United States Forest Service burn acreage graph you can see that there's a very good correlation between heat waves and the number of acres which burn in the United States. This shouldn't be surprising because heat waves are associated with drought. When the United States gets very hot, it's also very dry, and a lot of forest burns. The 1910 to 1960 Little Tropical Age is very real, and it's also extremely inconvenient for people pushing a global warming agenda. I've already shown you how they erased the pre-1960 warmth. Now I'm going to show you how the Biden administration has erased the high burn acreage in America's past. 
You can see that in the U.S. Forest Service burn acreage graph, the lowest year was 1983. And if you go to the National Interagency Fire Center site now, you'll see that they've hidden all the data prior to 1983, which was the lowest year. But at the end of January of this year, the same web page showed the complete data set back to 1926. So the Biden administration has erased all of this very inconvenient data prior to 1983. By hiding all the data prior to 1983, they can make it look like there's been an increase in burn acreage in the United States, when in fact there's been a very sharp decrease. Just like many other topics, the White House is committing massive fraud to misinform the public. If we go back to the National Interagency Fire Center website, we can look at what their excuse is for erasing the pre-1983 data. They're trying to make it sound like there's no official reliable data prior to 1983. But if we go back and look at the New York Times from 1938, we can see that the data was tracked by the United States Forest Service of the Department of Agriculture. They reported that in 1937, a forest fire started every three minutes in the United States and burned almost 22 million acres. They also said that the burn acreage in 1937 in the United States was slightly more than half what it was a year earlier in 1936. 1936 was the hottest summer on record in the United States. Now let's look at the United States Forest Service graph, which is still up on their website. It shows in 1937 there was about 22 million acres burned, and it was slightly more than half what it was a year earlier in 1936. The Forest Service burn acreage data is very well documented, and the Biden administration has no excuse for hiding it. The goal of the Biden administration is to demonize fossil fuels. Uh, but, but kiddo, I want you to just take a look, okay? You don't have to agree, but I want you to look in my eyes. I guarantee you. I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuel, and I am not going to cooperate. And as I mentioned earlier, they're trying to do that by convincing the public that they're either going to drown or they're going to burn up if they keep using fossil fuels. But neither the heat wave data nor the fire data supports their fear mongering. So they massively tampered with the temperature data and they hid the pre 1983 fire data. The actual data shows that burn acreage in the United States was much higher when carbon dioxide levels were much lower. But the Biden administration wants the public to believe that carbon dioxide is dangerous and causes forest fires. So they hide the data prior to 1983 when carbon dioxide levels were around 350 parts per million. By hiding the pre-1983 data, they make it look like there's a correlation between burn acreage and the amount of CO2. This relationship doesn't exist, and the Biden administration is simply misinforming the public. And unfortunately, this story gets much worse. This is another important document which the Biden administration has made disappear from government websites. It was prepared 20 years ago by the Department of the Interior, Department of Agriculture, Energy, Defense, Department of Commerce, Environmental Protection Agency, FEMA, and the National Association of State Foresters. The document said, in the conterminous United States during the pre-industrial period, 1500 to 1800, an average of 145 million acres burned annually. Today, only 14 million acres are burned annually. So burn acreage in the United States is down 90% from when carbon dioxide was at pre-industrial levels. The facts destroyed Joe Biden's agenda, so he's altered them or erased them. On his first day in office, he issued this executive order along with many others. Executive order on protecting public health and the environment and restoring science to tackle the climate crisis. What Joe Biden calls restoring science is actually destroying it. He's completely obliterated climate science over the past three months. Joe Biden gave a speech to Congress last night and discussed the manufactured climate crisis. And Senator Ed Markey responded, Like President Biden, I also think about jobs when I think about climate change. But this isn't Joe Biden's first time in the White House. In fact, he's been there for most of the last 12 years. 12 years ago, he promised that he was going to deliver 5 million new green jobs. But he actually delivered less than 3,000 new long-term green jobs at a cost of more than $1 million of taxpayer money per job. He missed his promise by a factor of more than 1,000, which is bad even for a politician. He's pulling the same scam and telling the same lies he did 12 years ago. 
There's nothing new about politicians tampering with climate data. It's been going on for a very long time. This article appeared in the monthly weather review of the U.S. Weather Bureau in January 1907. Is not honesty the wisest policy? They said, it is wrong to mutilate or suppress the record of an observation of a phenomenon of nature, but it's also wrong to make a bad use of the record. In fact, it's the misuse of meteorological data, not the observing or publishing, that constitutes a crime against the community. Observation and careful research are to be encouraged as useful. Misrepresentations are to be avoided as harmful. The independent press, as the voice of the people, should be not only vox populi, but vox dei, repressing all cheats and hoaxes. Defending the truth in the best interest of the whole nation as against the self-interest of a few. In the year 2021, the independent press are people like me. There's an army of climate skeptics out there defending the best interests of the whole nation against the self-interest of corrupt politicians, journalists, academics, and globalists. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the big climate lie for the past 13 years. You can visit him in Kyrie on the web at realclimatescience.com.